During the week, it looks like any suburban Cardiff street. Rows of hemmed-in terraced houses and the dour grey church edifice resting on its haunches. The only clue that something might be different is a flagpole dressed in a tangy orange flag emblazoned with kanda. Each Sunday morning, worshippers descend on the suburban street, which can barely cope with the influx of parked cars. Women are in bright solvar kameez and saris. The men wear bugs and have wiry beards. The girls wear chunnis and the boys have ramala on their heads. They appear in the neighbourhood and meander towards the converted church, a brightly clothed and brown skinned mirage in the unenthusiastically grey street. I think most of that reluctance came from the disjunction between my lived life and what felt to me like a jarring and alien intrusion, as jarring as those exotic worshippers in a suburban street. I didn't get this Sikh stuff. I didn't get why, on Sundays, I had to wrap some cloth around my head and sit in a prayer hall with all these people I didn't know reciting prayers. We grew up in Thornhill and I went to the local primary school. I did all the usual things. I got a bike with stabilisers that clattered around the street in the summer sun. I painted rocks. I kicked balls over neighbours' fences. I knocked on friends' doors to see if they would come out to play. I grew out of stabilisers and careered around the neighbourhood with my pack of street friends. We made fires with deodorant cans. We hid our secret files in secret dens and aimed water pistols at the open windows of passing cars. You see, the Gudwara is a place of unspoken rules and ritual. When you enter the prayer hall, you notice these rules that govern worship, although they are never explained. Men and women sit separately, cross-legged on white sheets. All heads are covered, men are turbaned, women are draped in chunnis. At the front of the hall is something like an altar, a gazebo structure which stands over above a raised platform, whereon a holy man sits singing from the holy book. He waves a horsehair brush which purifies the air around him. Conscientious worshippers rock back and forth to the holy man's chants in a strange, almost stupefied trance, sometimes echoing his chants in a more muffled, less distinct tone. It was apparent to me, even then, that these people were bound by an understanding of ancient customs that I did not have access to. As a child, looking in on this theatre of worship, I felt perturbed. When one enters the prayer hall, you must walk along a carpeted aisle between the male and female worshippers. It is a public act of worship. For the actors who had learnt their lines, they would walk with slow dignity and intention. And when they reach the altar, prostrate themselves on the ground in front of the holy book, rears in the air, with the prayer hall watching. Before stepping out into that prayer hall, I felt that same trepidation, as though about to plunge into an icy sea, or like an actor, before launching themselves on stage before an expecting audience. Except that I had never learned my lines.